Morning, uh, Roger Lewis, aka Tone Freaks here, uh, and this is going to be a, a video discussion live uh, between me and Ranjan Balamgumaran of uh, Financial Eyes. Uh, Ranjan's going to be joining me shortly. I've just had a message saying it'd be about three minutes. So it's 10.23 here in Sweden. Clocks went back at the uh, weekend. Um, and uh, this morning, something piqued um, a, 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 uh, a nerve with me. I'm just going to go to screen share here and just show you the... Uh, the story which um, which I wanted to discuss with Ranjan. So um, if we just go here, is this this story on the BBC? Uh, coronavirus: How my mum became a conspiracy theory influencer. And this chap here is Sebastian uh, Sebastian. Shemirani, and he's the son, uh, an old Etonian, no less, of um, not Anna Breeze, of Kate uh, Shemirani. Um, so here's uh, here's Kate here, um, and Kate and Anna Breeze have been in a um, a sort of a, not a discussion exactly, a, 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 an exercise whereby um, each accusing the other of being some sort of controlled opposition or whatever. Um, now, what's interesting uh, about this is that the narrative of COVID-19 um lockdowns and vaccination the wearing of masks etc has provoked much sort of hand wringing um in the mainstream media um just a a, a simple search um on on google yields various uh results um, all effectively um, attacking people that have given another narrative. Now, Kate Shermani, um has been the compare at, I think, two of the Trafalgar Square rallies in opposition to uh, the narratives. Uh, and it's sort of provoked quite a lot of um, discussion. Now, here we go. Here we go on BBC Trending. This is the long form uh, interview with Sebastian Shiromani. But then there's also a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can see October here, 17th, Disinfo Wars and the All-American Troll Farm, QAnon and the Rabbit Hole election. Um, why do some influence back bad products, etc.? I mean, um, now the censoring of some um, Trumps, so, so, some of uh, President Trump's um, tweets, particularly the New York Post one um, about the uh, Hunter Biden emails on on his computer, etc. None of this sort of uh, noise is new in relation to any particular big issue of the day. And so what I wanted to discuss with Ranjan uh, was uh, this BBC uh, video where Sebastian is basically saying that his mother's sort of, you know, how do you save your own mother from going down the same rabbit hole? Um, Now, what we haven't got here now is, is, is we haven't got Ranjan to join me just yet. This may be a bit rambling kicking off until we get into our stream. Um, so 
what I did is I cast my mind back to other um, opposition to narratives. I mean, a famous one is weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, which, of course, um, that whole weapons of mass destruction narrative emerged after the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. So there is a what's called a 9-11 truth movement, okay, um, where the NIST report on 9-11 uh, has a number of inconsistencies in it, which people have, have questioned. There's a great film actually called 9-11 um, in the Academic Community, which is, is a really interesting film. And if you watch that um, and also watch, say, the film Cool It, uh, where there's a whole section about how Bjorn Lombury, who wrote the uh, sceptical environmentalist that was made into the film, call it, uh, was effectively um, singled out for special and unusual punishment, shall we call it, by his peer group or some of his peer group in academia. Um, and, and that's what the, uh, um, the theme of this talk is. Um, Another one is Syria, the Duma gas tax, and say Professor Robertson and and the uh, there's a media group on Syria, uh, and that group of academics who study media narratives and media studies or whatever have also been singled out and you know effectively attacked um, to try and undermine their standing for making these arguments against uh, different narratives. Um, so. you know where would one start this story perhaps a good a good place to start is um say the assassination of john f kennedy jfk um now apparently that assassination did uh, lead to speculation about whether or not lee harvey oswald was the only person who um was involved in assassinating President Kennedy. Okay, and um, just libraries full of books have been written on that subject. Um, if not Lee Harvey Oswald, then who, uh, how, and why? Now, and there are various um, conjectures about that some of which actually involve the mafia i've been watching some interesting mafia films the other day uh, uh, um and uh there's a guy called aaron rusi who uh was connected to the mafia and he played michael in the godfather uh trilogy of films um and uh he uh claims in a recent interview with uh, Patrick Bet David on the Valuetainment channel um, and there's there's also I mean if you put in Aaron uh, uh, Rusi A-A-R-O-N uh, and, and you'll find um, a clip of him talking about the JFK assassination uh, also the death of Marilyn Monroe who famously had affairs with both um, JFK and his brother, uh, Robert Kennedy. Um, so that's back then. F fast forward today, and, and, and uh, I think it's Robert Kennedy Jr. is a well-known um, face and uh, advocate uh, for safer vaccines. Um, and uh, he's also been singled out. And curiously enough, he, he, members of his own family have, have, have uh, uh, kind of disowned him or gone against uh, what he's saying. Um, not similar to Sebastian um, and, 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 and his mother, Kate. Um, I mean, that kind of... Uh, media attack is, is 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 really fighting dirty in my opinion um so and well, look here's ranjan let's just get ranjan on board hello ranjan uh can you hear me i can't hear you is your mic on uh 
Uh, right, well, you're, you're not muted my end, so I don't think your mic is connected up. Right, we'll just get off the screen capture here. Can you hear me, Ranjan? Okay, well, I can't, I can't hear you, so... Um, audio default guests here you go guest view comments player sound there we are no right well you should be coming out but you're not i can't hear you ranger Let's see settings. General. Hmm. I'm not sure how we're going to resolve this, Ranjen. Um, I've got to add to stream. No, we don't want to do that. Right, so we're both there. Unmute mic. I'm really not sure why I can't hear you, Ranger. Have you got any Bluetooth stuff on? Uh, hold on. Um, One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Oh. Right, I'm looking at the stream, Ranjan, on actually on uh, the live feed on Twitter and, and your voice isn't coming out. Can you say something again? Right, Ranjan seems to have disappeared off. I guess he's going to try and get his mic working. Um, so anyway, where were we? Uh, Robert, Robert Kennedy Jr. and obviously you know, his family sort of disavowing um, some of the things that he says. Oh, here's Ranjan again. Add to stream. I'm back. Hello. I'm Aha, back. there we are. And there's sound. <laughs> can I can right. I be can I be slightly boring and technical? Uh -huh. Um so I've got a MacBook and so on the settings you've got a choice of either having it on headphones or multi. And I had mm -hmm. it on multi and I switched it to headphones. So for right. future reference. Cool on the stream yard right brilliant well you're coming through loud and clear now so that's good so anyway for the audience ranjan is uh near paddington in good old london yeah i mean town. i'm actually yeah so near kilburn made a veil vale around there um mm -hmm. in london county kilburn <laughs> yeah. uh and i'm in my house in sweden and uh ranjan and i are friends and um i I've, I've been back and forth to uk quite a lot this year on business and um Anyway, I sent Ranjan a couple of messages on, on Skype earlier. I just did an introduction, Ranjan, where I was sort of saying about the, the, the BBC interview with Sebastian 
uh, Shirawami, or however you say it, um, mm. a, 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 about his mother, Kate. Um, a, and uh, what I was saying was that um, she's being accused of being a conspiracy theorist. So I sort of, I went back to the JFK assassination and said that uh, that, is somewhere where the official narrative was having challenges and i was about to make the point that apparently the appellation conspiracy theorist was actually introduced by the cia to the u.s press at the time saying look people are speculating about this we want to put them off doing that um please refer to them as conspiracy theorists because that will put them in a bracket which make you know people can kind of point at laugh at or say you know that's a bad thing to be doing. Now, fast forward to the current COVID-19 lockdown, mask and vaccination narratives. Now, I think for those four things, it's not controversial to say that those four subjects are live in, in respect of the current um, establishment narrative of a pandemic. Um, and Could you just so, say them again? What, what are those four again? It is um, masks, lockdown, vaccination. Yeah, and and obviously the 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 the, the flu pandemic itself, right? Yeah. So it's uncontroversial, I think, that those are the topics that they are topics of some concern that dominate the news flow in the mainstream media at the moment. OK, so so what we're actually talking about is those four topics and discussion around around them. Now, yeah. uh, so on the vaccine point, OK, um, on the JFK assassination, I mentioned Robert Kennedy was also assassinated, but his Robert Kennedy's son, Robert Kennedy, Jr., is actually in the news because he made a film called Vaxxed or produced a film called Vaxxed 2, which is questioning the safety of some vaccines, not all vaccines. So all people who question the efficacy of some vaccines are not what you'd call anti-vaxxers. OK, um, but Kate Shirami, um, as a holistic medicine nurse, as a nurse, um, has been put into that bracket, number one, as an anti-vaxxer. Number two, as someone who's not, who's against the wearing of masks uh, and um, also against the lockdown strategy, all connected with this um, establishment narrative of a pandemic, okay? Uh -huh. Yep, okay. Right, so... There are other characters involved, such as David Icke, Piers Corbin, um, and uh, someone called Piers Robinson. I don't, I'm not sure who he is, but I P Piers Robinson is the media group on Syria. He's a professor of media studies. Oh, okay, I'm not sure, possibly in Nottingham or somewhere like that. Um, he he academic. He, he's an academic who is. Um, often writes um, uh, with Vanessa Beely and Vanessa Beely obviously is a journalist on the ground in Syria and um, there there is a briefing against her at the moment from the BBC. Now um, what I was actually wanted to lay out is and discuss with you a history of what uh, controlled opposition and gatekeeping with respect to resistance against dominant establishment narratives okay now so so starting off with the proto one if you like um say jfk right jfk okay. assassination okay um gulf of tonkin incident anyone i mean that that's another one uh, in fact that's one that turned out to be uh turned out to be a conspiracy theory that was became a proven conspiracy fact for instance um when when did that take place the gulf of tonkin it was the cause of spare casus belli for the start of the vietnam war 
Right, um, so, so 1960, so, around then, 60, 61. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was in the early 60s because yeah, okay. the Vietnam War was started, was it started by Truman, I think, who took over from JFK. Um, I, I mean, it covers a whole a whole sweep of stuff. So it's not a history test. Or no, sure, thing, sure, but, sure, yeah. Um, but, but what I You're want to say... You're just saying this stuff happens, yeah. Can, can, conspiracy theories conspiracy facts what are they what is a conspiracy theorist and my 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 first answer to that is that i actually prefer professor lance de haven's um terminology and he's come up with a thing called scads which is state crimes against democracy and he coined that um i don't know what you'd call it, uh, it it's uh it's a term, I suppose, uh, to um, cover the whole of the 9-11 uh, question marks. And with 9-11, that's one thing. Of course, weapons of mass destruction did prove to be an overreaction, an exaggeration. You know, the yellow cake, mm. the tubes, whether they were manufacturing, you know, can strike within several minutes, all that sort of thing. Um, and people who... Um, questioned the 9-11 um, narrative, 9-11 um, truth as they're called, the West weapons of mass destruction thing kind of grew out of um, the war on terror, so the invasion of Afghanistan and the uh, invasion and occupation of Iraq, that's that's kind of another, another one. Um, then another keystone in all of this is the Seattle protests against the World Trade, World Trade Organization, Organization in 1999, yeah. right? Which I would say is is probably the beginning of the current narratives emerging regarding the Great Reset, because at the same time as we've got this um, establishment pandemic narrative. We also now have a very strong Great Reset narrative, right, which is morphing into a discussion not only about vaccinations and, and, and how you keep a population healthy by vaccination as opposed to uh, whole medicine and, 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 and prevention being better than cure. Um, you, 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 you have this... Um, Pivoting, they call it in politics. It's pivoted from being only mm. about that to being we need a reset and we need a reset because climate change, right? Can I and, just uh, um, can I just come in? Yeah. Um, so so far we've been talking about events and we've been talking about interpretation of events mm -hmm. and possibly reframing. So that interpretation and reframing you're breaking up now ranjan hello bum, ba -dum, bum. we interrupt this broadcast. yeah i think we're back yeah. all right cool um so yeah so there's a series of events that we talked about some in the 60s and the 40s uh, and then coming closer uh the reframing in order to stop people from causing trouble and then you were talking about 99 2001 and the iraq war so what i find interesting about the 99 2001 thing is that the 99 uh that wasn't in the script the World Trade Organization, which is supposed mm. to say, right, consensus, everyone agrees, even if they don't agree, we, we, we can basically manufacture something that looks like an agreement and we'll have trading rules for all countries and everyone has this bar that has been set. Mm. And so there was opposition. People were saying, you know, farmers in South Korea, you know, etc. people around the world coming together and opposing it uh, in Seattle with trade unions, etc. Then when September 11th happens, the anti-globalization movement had been growing and growing and growing and growing. 
And then suddenly you have visit the Patriot Act, Homeland Security, mm -hmm. all of this kind of stuff, which is really criminalizing dissent in the US, as far as I know. Um, and I mean, I wasn't there. I was over here. Um, and then by the time you get to 2005, the Iraq war has and you have this other uh, public relations coup, Thornton Brown and Tony Blair, where try to see with the king's. That's breaking up again, my end, Ranger. I, I'm not sure how good the buffering of okay, StreamYard is. I'm okay here now again. Um, so so you have... Roger, are you there? Yeah, yeah, Roger, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can so, hear you. Uh, I, I'm concentrating yeah, on what so, you're saying. Hanging on every okay, word, yeah, so Roger. Yeah, yeah, of course, thank you. Uh, so you have these <laughs> events over time, and then the reframing of events depending on your perspective. Mm -hmm. So I know that I was way out on the left for most of this stuff. And um, so the, it, there's the permanent reframing. So every time those of us who were lingering on the left thought, oh, okay, look, we're making some progress, there'd be some massive terror attack. And then afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, rights were taken away and conversation was changed. Um, and so the merging of when you're bringing in the global reset, I find that extremely interesting uh intellectually but practically because of the way in which the level of conspiracy theory as a you know quote unquote as a it, it's it's got so high so the the level to which governments can't be trusted has led to an increase in people doing the questioning and the amount of questioning is so across the board that now um you you could have what would be called a left conspiracy theory or a right conspiracy theory and now everything appears to have completely gone out the window because it feels as though there are simultaneously lots of people clamoring for lockdown and lots of people clamoring for uh reasonable behavior on the basis that there aren't that many people actually dying of covid at all certainly mm -hmm. this time around um so yeah. Yeah, I think the reset and the climate change, what I find very interesting is how the left uh, are brought on board for authoritarian government against themselves. Uh, that I think that's really clever how that's happened, where people maybe on the centre on the left are begging for lockdown, begging to have rights taken away from them, and at the same time feeling OK about telling the Tories, you know, you need to be feeding children, etc., which obviously mm. they do need to be doing. But just the way in which the the, the so-called common sense left mind has been hijacked completely and doesn't even know which way it's facing because the corporates have taken over climate change as an idea, uh, big pharma, all of this stuff, the weapons industry, they, they, they're having it the way they like now. Right. So there, is, there doesn't seem to be much... Uh, the, the resistance is all called conspiracy theory and it's all called right-wing conspiracy theory now. Yes, I'm, uh, that's my take. I mean, I'm, do, yeah. do you do you see that? Well, there are a number of convenient sort of uh, labels that we tend to put on things, so we can stand them to one side and then talk about something else. Um, um, those labels tend to end up having people talking about labels as opposed to what you're trying to stick labels onto. So. Uh, Personally, I don't think left or right is a helpful uh, demarcation because um, most people are a mixture of some things left, some things right, or some things that are called left or called right. Um, okay. So a better generalization is authoritarian or libertarian, in my view, because you can have, you know, left or right libertarians left or right authoritarians so i, I quite like i was telling you yes about that political compass thing uh which is an interesting thing that people can do what's interesting about that the front page of that website at the moment has got uh donald trump in in the top right hand corner and biden in the top right quadrant not supposedly still authoritarian and still right but not as far as donald trump now, um, I think Donald Trump is a mixture of libertarian 
and authoritarian and probably joe biden is as well i, th I think people generally are because according to your own call it a moral compass different people have different attitudes like i think um, yeah, I, I and i think just from my perspective on this i think they agree on far more than they disagree and that's what matters if you don't live in the us um i think from for, for the point of view of over here i think they agree on a lot um uh, it's, domestic, it's domestic stuff they're arguing about a lot of domestic things i think and trump doesn't really want to go walkies anyway he don't, i don't think he wants to start a war abroad whereas biden yeah, probably well, does yeah which should i mean that's the thing that perhaps should interest most of us you know it, it, it I mean, there are lots of people all over the world who think, "Oh, good, <laughs> yeah, that's a great, that, you know, that's that that that's actually a good thing." Um, the what I wanted to talk about, though, was that you have these issues, you have these events, okay, and then mm. you have these narratives about them, and uh, what we call the mainstream media and the narrative that's put out there. So, whether it's a corporate narrative a government narrative or elitist narrative um or a populist narrative so you know you, you again labels um and when does a populist become a conspiracy theorist are all populist um positions on issues surrounding events and policies um founded in conspiracy or is a conspiracy theorist a handy label not to listen to the arguments that's my position that's the that that's the position that i take um in respect of kate shirawami now there's a sub uh question regarding kate shirawami who has it seems accused another ju uh, uh, journalist called anna breeze of being a shill or a stooge or um, a, a controlled opposition or a gatekeeper type thing, right? Now, um, my own personal view is that both of them may be, both of them may not be. Um, it doesn't actually necessarily matter. Uh, what, what's important is the arguments that they're making. Um, if someone is funding someone to make arguments and they're making arguments that are being paid for such as say daniel defoe's pen which was a hired pen in you know back, yeah, back in, in, the, in the days of uh, of the bubonic plague etc yeah he switched um, sides because he was broke yeah yeah he was like a, a he was a spin doctor of that age so you know we know what spin doctors are um but we have a class of politicians that sort of says you know well leave our spin alone you know spin is what we do because that's what we are um and but it had but it has effects that's the problem I, I wouldn't mind if they were just if it was just on the theater well when does a when does a spin doctor's narratives become a conspiracy narrative it's you know, a very good they... question this isn't it especially in the run-up to an election um so yeah so as you were saying you you've got those two but you were talking about populism and conspiracy theory and you were saying how conspiracy theory can be used in order to not listen to somebody as a, as a label. Well, the, the, the label is undoubtedly meant to throw people off their um, stride to make them feel uncomfortable. I mean, I've, I've read a lot about the philosophy of conspiracy theories and Ranjan. I did a reading of, can you hear me, Ranjan? I, I, I still seem to be chatting away. Um, anyway, Complots of Mischief by, by a New Zealand academic called Charles Pigeon, um, which is based on the Shakespearean uh, Shakespeare play, uh, which has slipped out of my head already. Ralph Fiennes plays uh, it brought into a modern setting. Um, Ranjan seems to have just gone off to try and reboot, I think. Um, but complex of mischief, as I say, is this this uh, this poem, um, which is a, based on a philosophical paper. In the introduction to it, Charles Pidgeon actually talks about um, 
a book of philosophy uh, written by, oh, which one was it? Uh, Hume, David Hume wrote a book. And, and, and in this book about philosophy that Hume wrote, uh, he mentions the word conspiracy something like 150 times. You'll find it on my YouTube channel. Ranjan? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, um, cool. I, I was just talking about complex of mischief and Charles Pigeon's introduction to it, where he, he there's a book by David Hume which, which which mentions conspiracy theory, or conspiracy is mentioned, and another word for conspiracy, something like 150 times in this whole book. Um, you know, the idea that conspiracies don't exist um is is just patently ridiculous it's an absurd proposition what that they so, don't exist yeah of course they exist i mean they, you know they, there's a law of c criminal conspiracy it exists you know two or I more think, i think it means firing yeah. in secret to, exactly to, yeah. to, to get a certain outcome i think I it mean, means to, to to breathe the same air so basically if you and i have a chat about something in, and we say in future we will behave thus that's arguably a conspiracy yeah. because we've so yeah so in terms of conspiracy theorist as a label okay mm. my, my my at this point of our discussion i would say let's put that to one side because this is not at all in defense of conspiracy theory okay uh, -huh. uh we, we, we we'll proceed on a predicate that conspiracies exist of course they exist it's absurd to suggest otherwise um, but that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about. Can I? Can I just mention is... something? Can I just mention something just before you do? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not to change the topic at all. It's Robert Anton Wilson, who wrote the Illuminatus trilogy, was the editor of the letters section of Playboy magazine in the sixties, and he mm -hmm. got a very interesting mailbag. Him and his colleague Robert Shea. Lots of people sent lots of posts in saying, "What's going on? It's the sixties. You know, we're bombing Vietnam. Why? Blah de blah." Um, and then when he wrote the Illuminatus trilogy and other work. People said, oh, you're such a conspiracy theorist. You know, you keep on saying this and that, you know, that George Washington was switched by Adam Weishaupt as a double in the 18th century, the Illuminati and blah, 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 all of these different things. And he said, I'm not actually a conspiracy theory. I don't believe any of these things. I just collect them. There's so many of them. I collect them and I share them. And there are so many there that as soon as you talk about anything, then you get accused of being a conspiracy theorist. But actually, all you're doing is talking about things. Well, it's, a, it's effectively it's an ad hominem attack, which is mm. a distraction from an argument that anyone's making. It, right. it, you, you may as well sort of say um, you're fat or you're thick or you're, I don't know, you know, or you shat your pants or something. You know, I, it's, it's a puerile um, nothing. It's not an argument. Sure. OK, so. It, OK. Um, so what I'm saying is, right, OK. There's a label that you stick on people to shut them up. But what are they actually saying? Right. So what are they saying? Now, the next question, which is an interesting question, is why are they saying it? Right. So, for instance, why is Anna Bree saying what say she says about um, if a vaccine is available? OK, would you take it? Right. Mm. And. The fact that she says, well, as long as people have got a choice, you know, my body, my choice, that's a consistent argument. OK, yeah. now. Um, Kate um, has a different position in that uh, quite a few vaccines have been proven to be harmful. You know, if you if you look that you know even if you read the instructions on some of them there are side effects which are not um publicized so the idea of compulsory vaccination with a new vaccine right is a question of some concern okay i i, I think it's concerning you know if, if, if someone's saying to me we have this and we're going to inject it in you the person that's manufacturing it has a uh basically uh exemption from liability if it does you harm that's but true isn't saying, it? that's true isn't it they have an exemption from liability right apparently yes yeah and, 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 that's, and, that, that's a bit of a problem I, isn't it I, I, I think it's a legitimate question to say well hold on a second um you know what's in this thing why have they got this exemption from liability 
Um, and surely you, it, it's not the place of my government to say you, you have to take this. This is the idea of masks as well. You wear a mask to protect other people, not to protect yourself. They say the same thing about vaccines and that there are a number of logical inconsistencies in that argument that uh, if one child is unvaccinated, say for months, and all the other children are, how is that vaccinate, unvaccinated child putting those other children at risk? Now, I, I don't know that there may be lots of answers to that question, right? But it seems to me it's a legitimate question to ask and roars of disapproval and conspiracy theorists aren't arguments against that question. You know, so say, well, hold on a second. If masks work, if vaccines work, if you voluntarily take the vaccine and therefore you're project, pr protected, you know, and, and then how far do you go with it? So that, you know, again, there are there are steps in in a process that starts from from the initial uh proposition if you will and so um so so there's this debate okay so i see two intelligent women okay articulate women who have concerns and they are making arguments uh which are different choices okay you know whether you choose to go whether you cast your lot with one argument or the other argument is your business i'm not saying that one or other is right they may both be wrong they may both be right in certain circumstances but the next question is why are they saying it are they sponsored to say that now are they saying it to control the narrative to or to trip up some sort of opposition coalescing in a united front against a dominant narrative i now, see okay so this is this is the where the question of controlled opposition or gatekeepers come in and it doesn't matter to me whether someone's a gatekeeper or controlled opposition uh but they exist i mean i i mean it doesn't upset me that i mean logically they would exist i mean it, if i was a benign dictator or whatever or any democracy i i would be more surprised if 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 that didn't exist you know than the fact that it does um my own view in terms of you know how do you deal with it is 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 well you listen to the arguments and you make the counter arguments and you get that out there so um what seems to happen though with um organized opposition to dominant narratives is attacks happen that it's a divide and rule thing so the job is done once you get people arguing against each other which has happened in the 9 11 truth movement which has happened in the 7 7 truth movement um it's definitely a strategy with respect to people who oppose the climate alarmism agenda um and it seems to be happening now with the anti-lockdown anti-mask anti-compulsory vaccine uh thing and it's perfectly possible to have a different position on those three questions, right? Because, yeah. you know, it, 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 they are open questions with many variables. And so um, if, if one is to have an open and enriching discussion about these questions, okay, um, the starting point shouldn't be assuming bad faith on the other side. Uh, but also in a grown-up way, accepting that, of course, some people may be acting uh, with a motivation, which is, you know, like, for instance, um, take 77 Brigade, which is the Signals Regiment Hired Troll Division of the British Army, which, what's he called, Tobias Elwood? Lieutenant Colonel Tobias Elwood is the commanding officer of that outfit. I, I well, don't know if he I mean, still some, is. I don't know if he still is. He was. Uh, yeah, maybe. I think he is, yeah. Um, oh, really? So, seven, 77 brigade okay they're, they're the they're paid trolls another another group that has a lot of paid tro trolls is monsanto monsanto famously have a lot of paid trolls um news organizations at news at 10 most of those people you see in the background of the news on news at 10 they're actually spamming that's you know that's what they're doing and and um uh so cambridge analytica 
and, and, and all of that stuff about Brexit. It's just modern mass communication trying to steer a narrative or steer a mindset in one direction. The nudge thing. The UK column talks about this nudge thing and this um, uh, seeking to control people's yeah choice architecture choice architecture human That's beings right. are predictably irrational so you've got to funnel them into the right place so this is your man Gert gigarenza isn't it well he says the opposite yeah he says he says yeah. that those people who say that are going to take your liberties away from you yeah. uh, well i agree with Gert. I, 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 yeah. I agree with that I, I i think it's very dangerous i i, I find it deeply offensive at a philosophical level um i you know but hey, you know, I, I, I'm not seeking to impose that view on anyone else. You know, for me, it doesn't float my boat. I, I, I don't like authoritarian or, mm. you know, I, you know. I think they that, call it libertarian paternalism. That was the word they came up with, which is a contradiction. But they, yeah, yeah, of course. We were talking the other day, Ranjan, and you mentioned we were talking about someone. I can't remember who it was. And you sort of said they're a bit like a Mary Whitehouse. Who was that? Mm. It was uh, Owen Jones. Owen Jones, that was it. We were talking about Owen Jones. Yeah, because of the outrage. Yes. Um, and 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 I what I said about him is that he is a good interviewer. Uh, I mean, he comes out with quite a bit of stuff which I, I don't necessarily agree with, but one of he's a great interviewer and, and he does an interview with um with, with with Peter Hitchens. And I do agree with a lot of what Peter Hitchens says. Um I might not agree with some of his uh prescriptions for what he says happened but but peter hitchens seems to me to be clinging on to some sort of journalistic objectivity whilst at the same time saying well you know if left to me i would prefer this to happen but he's not confusing the two things you know his opinions and his reporting of the news are clearly demarcated in his own writing you know, by, yeah. you know Pe peter's, own yeah no no sure peter's got his limits as well mm. and you know there are certain things that his his lawyers won't let him do so he doesn't do them yeah. but, well, you know. uh, well, well we all i mean yes so so those are imposed limits but we also have our own yeah sure you know uh self-imposed limits or self-editing self-censorship yeah. yeah that sort of thing um so so let's get back to this this point about controlled opposition gatekeepers and then another useful term is useful idiots right so useful idiots are people who are encouraged to do stuff because um they are causing problems for your own you know for, for, for your own opponent and obviously you'll encourage them to do it and and it was lenin that term that, that coined the term useful idiot so um do do i think that kate or or, or 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 anna are useful idiots no no i don't i don't personally think they're idiots at all i think they're both intelligent women you know i'm sure they you know they'd be interesting people to sit down with both of them and have a chat with right um what tends to happen though is when people are attacked the way that they're being attacked it's natural for us all to to become self-defensive about it right um now just on another issue here or another person um there there was a oh what's she called now i forget her name now um that there, there was someone who was prosecuted for writing anti-semitic songs um, and she started off by making some uh, claims about the Holocaust. Um, and then she was pilloried um, and, and people were trying to take her living away from her. I, as a, she was a cruise ship entertainer. Um, and um, uh, there's one song she wrote about the Holocaust, which is really offensive. And it definitely is anti-Semitic right um my view on that is i i wouldn't uh outlaw it I, but i would argue with with the you know with the propositions within it right. um and alison shablow she was called shablow alison shablow um and I, I mean i wrote a blog about it tommy robinson as well you know i mean they 
both of them say things I, I fundamentally disagree with. Um, but again, um, by no platforming, getting rid of, you know, scoring out their social points or whatever, okay, what, what it does is it forces people into a more extreme position where maybe they can get some some shelter or comfort, you know. And so, in a way, it, it, it doesn't help. It doesn't shine light on, on stuff. And that's the... So, controlled opposition, gatekeepers, right, movements where people want to place legitimate arguments which aren't being made and legitimate arguments aren't being made with respect to this current pandemic the reporting and the fiddling with the statistics and all this sort of thing it's legitimate to say that professor is it neil ferguson um his model is crap and they're seeking to use it again balances uh projections which were not a prediction famously in September, they're way off. You know, this idea that PCR tests are um, laden with false positives and um, a case is not necessarily an infected person. I can't, I can't, I can't, at this, at this stage, I can't stress enough to anyone who's reading or uh, watching this to, again, have a look at the work of this chap called Gerd Gigerenza because false positives, manipulation of statistics... Uh, the taking away of your liberties, all of this stuff, it's all in there. You know, he doesn't concentrate on the liberty being taken away. But, you know, the idea that we are slaves to our desires and that we have to be funneled into this or funneled into that, that whole nudge thing, uh, the way the government is basically, as you say, manipulating statistics. Yeah. And when I say manipulating statistics, all I know is, for example, what they count. They change what they count. Mm -hmm. First it's this and then it's that. So it's all done in order to make the numbers look big, not uh, to be consistent from one day to the next about what they're counting. But yeah, yeah. sorry. So um, when a rat is smelt, as it were, and people sort of say, well, hold on a second, we're, we're not sure we're having this. Let, let, let's all let's put our heads together and, 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 and you know, let, let, let's you know, what have you got to say about this then? Yeah, and when, when people start saying, "Well, hold on a second, what about this?" Then <laughs> that they're, they're being shut down. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, or well, you know, um, well, we're the expert. You're arguing with an expert, you know. So tell me, where did you go to medical school? All of that sort of. I saw this argument put to Juliet uh, Brewer, Juliet Hartley Brewer. Yeah, yeah you're right. right Again, okay. another intelligent woman asking good questions, like Kate, like um, uh, Anna right okay uh and i i she was interviewing patrick jenkin who, who's you know a spook ex-cabinet minister whatever still on the security committee you know all that sort of thing so he's an um, mp mp tory mp yeah patrick jenkin right um and, okay. and uh you he, mean he, bernard he, don't you bernard bernard Jen Jen Ber yeah, bernard that Jen guy. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he, he took this very patrician attitude towards julia you know it's sort of like he did but he didn't he didn't ask her where she went to medical no it but it was a similar sort of thing i mean that's that it's it's a little um undermining someone's uh uh position in an argument based on well you're not an expert is, is obama famously used to say about oh so you know if you want someone to land the plane you want it to be a pilot don't you yeah. Okay, I, I've got you now. Yeah, I, I was saying another variation on it is Obama used to be fond of saying, look, if you want someone to land the plane, you want it to be a pilot, don't you? You know, right. I, uh, so they're, they're little sort of aphorisms that people trot out to sort of say, OK, you might have a point there, but because of who you are, what you are, I'm going to pull rank on you. Right. Mm. And uh, it's a way of closing down discussion. OK, I, I have sure. to think discussion is healthy. And, you know, I'll, well, as you know, you and I talk for hours on Skype sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, and and um, mercifully for people that may happen on a YouTube video here or there. Yeah, we, we you know, we, we, we're not given to recording all of them. But I 
like, like I said today, I had all these windows open and, and I wanted to discuss with you this, this, this point, and this is the point. So it, 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 it is the point. Um, when people are saying, hey, what about this then? And enough of them are getting together. And so they've joined up into a, a movement or a front of opposition. Okay. Where a movement is identified, it gets infiltrated, right? Now, our discourse on social media is infiltrated by definition, whether you're on Google, Facebook, or whatever you're doing with the analytics, you're, you're being tracked, come what may. Um, but this, this idea that if there's a movement, it will then get infiltrated. And so that's when we come to the Occupy movement, okay? Uh, and so that was the kickback against the austerity narratives uh, following the 2008 crash, the global financial crisis. Um, and when Cameron came in uh, uh, and he and Osborne basically made the wrong economic choices, condemning the British public to austerity and blowing up bubbles for what became called the 1%. So then you had the 99% Occupy movement they produced something called the 99% declaration in the US, which was very good. People like Steve Bannon made films about Occupy. Uh, and the, the guy that founded Breitbart, the guy that died, what was mm. his name? Um, Breitbart, Andrew Breitbart, maybe? Is that what it was? It was called something else, Andrew something else. It wasn't Breitbart, was it? Was his name Breitbart? It was called okay. Andrew something or other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the same guy. I, I think. He, he, he was the producer of these films that Steve Bannon made. And then Steve Bannon had an association with Breitbart. The other people interesting in Breitbart is Milo Theonopoulos or whatever he's called. Yeah, um, Milo My, Theonopoulos, I, yeah. I, I went to have a look the other day to see what he was up to. Um, I mean, I can remember, I once saw him on some sort of BBC Vox Pops thing and he was introduced as a british constitutional expert he was talking about something like uh princess dies dresses or something i can't <laughs> I, mean, I was deeply offended by the fact that he was supposed to be a constitutional expert course, as far yeah. as i could see he had absolutely no chops in the field of uh, of constitutional law whatsoever as far as i could see <laughs> uh, you know i, I but that, that doesn't disqualify him from having an opinion uh, of course uh, uh, but but it, it wasn't presented as his opinion it was he was present he was being presented as an expert which it's an so example of what you're talking about right yeah yeah now so it's the same way you know some it's a little bit like giving the certificate to the tin man in the wizard of oz i have this certificate therefore i am an expert or, or Lucian and, and, and the, uh, you know, the, the, the illiterate book collector, that sort of thing. Um, conferring a gong on someone, i.e. Nobel Peace Prize to Henry Kissinger, yeah, Obama, but not Donald Trump, you know, go figure. Um, so infiltration of movements first of all there has to be a movement to infiltrate okay but what what passes for a movement these days is usually controlled opposition like Ex extinction rebellion right i think that's a manufactured controlled opposition and so another thing i went to was mark windows of windows on the world did an excellent series about um back in occupy about the occupy infiltration and then about xr rebellion and how that is a manufactured organization which is really it's controlled opposition merged with a kind of a gatekeeper type vibe um black lives matter i would say the same thing positive money now um has been infiltrated and subverted um now the early days of Occupy, which had anarchist roots, were, was that you don't have a leader because if you have a leader or a leadership structure, it is open to being subverted. It's much better to have a distributed uh, cell like um, structure because it is more robust. Um, you find this in computing as well. And um, so. 
but once people start coalescing around someone and, and, and offering up a leader can't help but think of life of brian here like he's not the messiah he's a very naughty boy you end up with a lot of very naughty boys right some of who are like judas taking the you know is it 30 pieces of silver yeah um so uh what seems to be happening now is that the arguments which are being fielded by people like Anna Brees, like Kate, I can't say her surname, but, but you know. Shirami, I can't remember. Kate, Kate Shirami, right? Her own son being used to brief against her on the BBC. Uh, you know, don't go down the that. rabbit hole. You, you, but... Yeah, you sent me that this morning. And he's a young former Etonian yeah. Um, yeah. investment bank. So the the very existence of something like seventy seven brigade of the GCHQ uh, rules for disrupting internet forums, um, the Monsanto form in 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 doing this commercially um the cambridge analytica um operation we call it that um right that all exists so i mean you know you would you know of course you, you would wouldn't you i mean you know if you're trying to sell your own wares why wouldn't you do it you know that's that that's that's the point um and it isn't illegal I thought But but then 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 you have this idea of people who infiltrate things being above the law. They're allowed to do illegal things to catch bad people. Right. And that's another part of this question. Another part of this this idea here. So all I'm really saying to Kate and Anna is put your heads together and find your common ground. Right. Um, uh, in terms of the wisdom of Solomon, okay, the famous story of 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 of, of, of uh, the two mothers, one who has a a, a child who, who 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 has died, and they're arguing over a, a, a living baby, and both claiming that baby, and King Solomon reasons, right? Well, I'm going to cut the baby in half, and and you can have half each. Of course, it'd be a dead baby. But they have half each. And one of the women is OK with that. And the other woman is absolutely not OK with that. And that is the the mother he gave the child to. Right now. Why, why, a, why, why, why are you narrating King Solomon's? The, uh, well, 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 simply be, simply because what, what you've got here is you've got two people set in opposition to each other. Are they controlled opposition? Are they um, paid shills or whatever? I mean, if they have an interest in their own arguments, they will resolve those arguments. You know, they, they, um, if they continue arguing as they are, to me, they're, they're like the the, 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 the the woman who's saying, oh, right, I'm all right with the baby being chopped in half. That it, it, it's, a, it's a poor May analogy. I just say this, or, this or at this stage. Oh, God. Every time I say anything, we cut. Well, obviously, 77 Brigade or GCHQ believe you're making more sense than me, Ranjan. <laughs> Roger. Yeah, I'm here. I can I hear back? you. Yeah, well, you're back with me. You're in my cans. <laughs> yep. Okay, I think I'm back. Um, yep. So at this stage, uh, an hour into our chat, I feel. Is it been an hour? Good lord! Uh, an hour since you started, but mm -hmm. um, I think uh, at this stage you have described events, phenomena, and the way that it has been going. And I'm just wondering: Are we going to jump from description to prescription in any way? Uh, what I mean is. 
I feel that you've outlined a lot of what's going on for me. Where should we be thinking that things might be uh, okay. going? Is that is that where we're going? Yeah. Okay. So I have a question for you. Who is George Barder? George is someone who I know through Occupy. So I turned up a bit late to Occupy. So it started in September 2011. I went down there a couple of times and there were a bunch of working groups. One of them, so different committees in a way. One of them was called the Economics One. The other one was called the Environment, Energy and Equity One. Uh, there were other ones. There was one for democracy, one for faith, uh, different ones. Um, I don't remember seeing George at any of the meetings myself, actually. But a lot of them may have happened before I got there. He was a fundraiser for a charity, I think an environmental charity, possibly Greenpeace. And he was one of the main organisers of something called uh, Occupy Democracy, where we went to Parliament in 2014 to uh, occupy Parliament Square. Um, yeah, he seems pretty well informed on things. I think he may have been um, studying to become a lawyer at one point. And as a result of that, well, not as a result, he's well informed about laws that are coming in and things like that. That's what I found. So we've hung out quite a lot. He talks quite a lot about things but so do i so yeah we got on okay um and he was involved in the thing called the compassionate revolution and then which became extinction rebellion uh, okay C can you see the screen share where, on your screen i can indeed is that george barder no where it says before we start who's that then this person here uh, that is Mark. What's his name? I can't remember his surname, but he's called Mark. I do remember accusing him of being a copper um, and other people. Oh, doing no, I thought that was George, you see. Um, no, this is this, this is not George. This is not George. This is someone called Mark. I can't remember his surname. Because um, I know George Barder is mentioned in this 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 film. And this is a Windows on the World film, and this is a Occupy, and this is Occupy in the Bank of Ideas. Yeah, so George. Is... I think George appeared on the TV quite a lot, um, so he was the go-to person, and he would appear on the telly quite a lot. Uh, this person, I can't remember his name. He was Mark. I know that we 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 didn't exactly get along, me and this guy, but um, he got on well with other people who I knew. Right, because. Fast forwarding to Extinction Rebellion, uh, George Bader was involved in that, and Mark Windows and Piers Corbin talking about Occupy in a later. Uh, uh -huh. There we are. We'll just just get it on the screen here. Oh, my screen is freezing now. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say I'd say George is a bit of a strategist in some ways, you know, in the background. Well, I think with Extinction Rebellion, that's true. But I think he had a more operational role in his infiltration of the Occupy movement. And this guy here, like you said, you, you remember suspecting him of being a police officer. Um, whether yeah, he I, is I told not, him, I know. told him, I told him that's what I thought. Yeah. So, well, you know. Ke Ke Kelfin and this other guy, um, he's being uh, basically examined or put to proof, if you like, by Kelvin Oberon, who, who's a poet, um, and another guy whose name I can't recall, and I can't scroll back and forth through through the video now because it's frozen on my screen. Yeah. Now, um, can I can I just say something on the subject mm -hmm. of whether or not either of these two people are uh, in the pay of anybody to do with the government or the state? Um, Personality-wise, they wouldn't like me to say this, but I possibly share something in common with them which is that um, I talk a lot, and so do they. And so I think they end up performing what look like leadership roles in what's supposed to be a non-hierarchical organisation. Well, and they're facilitators. Would, that, I mean, yeah, they are exactly. facilitating these supposed meetings, which, what's it called? Um, That's the word, facilitation. Sortition. 
Uh, well, I don't know if this was an example of a sortition here, but yeah, they are. I suppose it is. I mean, it's a small group and the ideas move around um, and they do kind of facilitate, I suppose. Yeah. Um, well, but... ba ba Bannon in his films about Occupy, particularly Zuccotti Park, um, where they all repeat stuff. And I've seen David, Gra you know, the late David Graeber sort of having him, you know, he's been repeated when he's addressed large group. Extinction Rebellion do it all the time. But the first time I saw it was in Zagati Park. Um, now, how, whether that started as a popular thing and they latched onto that and realised it's a good way to sort of... Oh, they definitely did not create that. That is not a new process. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I remember nearly 20 years ago being in a meeting where people were doing this to in yeah. indicate that they agree. And then there's these other things as well. Mm. And I remember at the time, I mean, I guess as with other things, there are conditions under which that might work better and conditions under which it might not. I, I mean, Mark Windows is brilliant on all this stuff. I mean, um, I, I think um, so. Anyway, that's the Occupy movement. Then you've got Extinction uh -huh. Rebellion. Between the two, and at the time of Occupy, there was something called The People's Voice, which was a YouTube-based uh, platform. David Gareth, Icke, right? David Icke was behind it. Gareth Icke was a presenter, presented a brilliant music show. Um, and uh, The People's Voice had a lot of people, Sonia Poulton, um, uh Oh, God, who's he called? The guy that uh, broadcasts from Manchester now, the Irish guy. Um, anyway, uh, Richie Allen. No, yeah, Richie Allen. Richie Allen. They they all were part of and grew out of that, more, uh, that movement, and they all fell out. Right? Well, you told me there was a big thing about someone running off with a bunch of Bitcoin, because I think you had some – what was Drew involved in it, I think? He was Not sure. He was, yeah. yeah. So I can remember we were discussing it, and 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 you see, um, David I's got a new platform called Iconic, which is very good. I subscribe to it. Um, okay. And uh, um, of course, David Ike is the big bad monster of conspiracy theorists. That's how he's painted. Um, now, whether. I mean, two British people, certainly of my age, can't discuss David Icke without talking about the Terry Wogan interview and the lizards. The lizards is a standby. Stand by. If you don't want to talk about David Icke, you mention lizards. If you want to talk about David Icke, you have to say lizards, put that on one side. What else is he saying? Right. But with David Icke, it's lizards and conspiracy theorists. There, there are like two of them. Now, what Alex Jones, who's another conspiracy theorists that people like to demonize what he says about david ike and the lizards is it's the turd in the punch bowl and um, right so some people say it's because he wants to disguise some sort of latent anti-semitism um it's interesting there's an article in the in, in the jewish chronicle about uh, kate shirami and again um obviously in the jewish community there are perfectly justified fears of extreme right-wing ideologies, i.e. Nazism and anti-Semitism coming from that place. Now, uh, you know, and understand that, um, the, uh, I mean, I, I don't think David Icke is anti-Semitic. I don't think he's very, you know, to me, um, the, what, what he's putting forward is take Brian Rose at um, London Real and the interviews he's done with him. Um, the main takeaway you always get from David I is kind of love and peace, man. You know, he's kind of like, you know, everyone's favourite hippie uncle that drinks real ale in a way that, that, you know, perhaps has an embarrassing sort of dancing style at weddings. You know, I mean, I, um, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking that away from David Icke, to be honest. But um, because the things that well, he talks about, the things he talks about are so serious that I don't walk away with a completely harmless feel to it because. Um, I, 
look, I like David I, 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 I would love to have a few beers with him and Gareth. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 to me, I think they're great blokes. I, I you know, um, I we think would probably we, the, the, we would probably disagree about Israel and Palestine, me and them. Okay, not because I'm a a, a, a Zionist, um, but simply because you know, Israel exists and has existed for a long time. Um, and uh, I, I think Chomsky says, you know, you, you can't really get away from a two state solution now to uh, there. So actually, um, you know, you have to start from where you are, you know, that, if you're going to be pragmatic about anything you know you know we are where we are where do we go from here well i think i think roger i think there are a few people who you wouldn't be prepared to sit down and have a chat with very few i mean i can't even think of who they are uh in fact no i can probably name a couple of them um <laughs> Matt, <laughs> we, might, we, we might we might have mentioned one or two George, of them today George yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so um but yeah, I think I think even though Mr. Ike and his son will make points that uh, you agree with, the I think some of the things associated with that there's problems. There's problems because once you once you cast the net that wide, you're just going to have problems. And this is the subject that we're talking about. Once you just open the door, so for example, the QAnon thing. One of my friends is deeply into QAnon. Mm -hmm. And when I hear the word bloodlines, for example, not far away from the word Rothschild in a sentence, I'm switching off. You know, if if I heard the word Rothschild Bank and the names of the partners and some of the investments they had, I'm listening because that's real. But once you start talking about something it's the vagueness that I can't stand. Well, it's, it's, it's the it's, vagueness. It's, it's the kind of like anything that comes out of my mouth is probably right. That's yeah. a bit far for me. And so that is the problem with um, some of the people that we've been speaking about today is that when they open their mouths, then it's a case of, ooh, they're not that bothered about how right or wrong they are. And if you've been lied to consistently, that's how you're going to sound when you say I've had enough of the lies. So I understand yeah. that. Well, and I'm OK is, with the fact that you yeah. would sound like that. But the point at which you go from sounding like that to being lionized and being some authority figure on stuff. I mean, I appreciate you're going to have a resistance. But I mean, for example, I'm a Sri Lankan Tamil, um, currently still pretending to be British as I was born here. But there was a war in Sri Lanka and you would have kids being given guns and cyanide pills financed mm -hmm. by us over here but you'd also supposedly have the intellectual division you know like you know with the ira and Sinn fein and and all this kind of stuff so you're supposed to have this kind of separation now where is kate is for that's her name on this is she representing the intellectual front or is she representing the um you know the client facing front as it were and that's cool i appreciate you're going to have distinctions between the two and some people for example in some movements will be the ones saying okay we're going to go and kill them over there and other people will say right this is how we're going to do our strategy for our pr so i don't know what she is in that movement and the same with david ike and the same with all these other people i don't know what they are you know if it's george or mark or the other george or whoever people are you know roger people are playing different roles and um you know that's all well and good but when we get back down to pure facts and thinking about what to do next, then, yeah. So Levison, do you remember the Levison thing? Mm -hmm. And that, the whole thing about phone hacking and, uh, and that type of thing. And so when there was the arguments about whether or not to regulate the press, I am guessing that you, given your extreme love of freedom, if you don't mind me saying it like that, uh, and debate, I'm guessing that you would be saying, actually, I don't really think we should be having press regulation in you know in in the way that it appears to be proposed maybe we should carry on having people going to court and stuff but press regulation i don't know um 
so there was that whole question of press regulation. And I remember coming across a book written by somebody probably of spiked ex lefty who becomes what I would call a corporate shill. Um, and he wrote a book called There's No Such Thing as the Free Press, which I thumbed through. And one of the points that he made, do you remember how you were talking about Daniel Defoe before? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the points that he made was, um, I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's, is it Cobden, Hazlitt, um, some of these people from before, possibly Wilkes, um, people who were doing pamphlets 200 years ago, uh, not everything that they said was true. Uh, or, or, for example, you know, you look at the academic world, don't you? And so some people are really good on certain things and not very good at the other stuff. And um, if you have a free press, sometimes you're going to have a newspaper say things that just isn't true uh, or things that just aren't true. And that's almost part and parcel of what you get in a free society. And the idea that you have self-regulation, external regulation and the courts this is roughly what we're talking about. Um, and so then afterwards, we have this culture here where the BBC is just labelling everybody a QAnon conspiracy theorist if they question the figures. If they, I mean, personally, I don't think as many people are dying of coronavirus as we're being, as, as is being suggested to us. Yeah, I don't think there's any justification for the excessive lockdown measures. I think it would be much better if people just, got told listen if you're worried then don't go out you know and you know and and protect yourself and we can arrange for you to have your food delivered to you you know and and stuff like that that's that that is what i would think is sensible but i mean going away from that going back to the way we're talking about the the labeling of everything i i think it's a problem but at the same time yeah no i mean full stop but i think it's also important not to simply say because i'm usually the one throwing the stones and I'm aware that when I am doing that, it doesn't mean I've got all the answers. It just okay. means I'm throwing the stones. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I think a free press is important. and uh, But I also think citizen journalism is, is important. <laughs> I think that, um, I think comment sections and discussion oh sections God. in newspapers and on the BBC are incredibly important and have deteriorated. That's why there's such a thing as off Guardian is because the Guardian isn't where was it where comment is free or whatever they say. Can, can I may, may may I just be triggered for one second? Mm-hmm. So freedom of speech, right? So someone delivers a class that didn't go very well in France and has his head chopped off on the way home. Then afterwards. Okay, so whatever. Then afterwards, yesterday, in the Guardian, in the comments section, I went to the opinion, sorry, not in the comments section, I went to the opinion section. Agnès Poirier, French journalist, lives in Paris, writes a thing saying, this teacher, you know, oh my God, we love history teachers. He's the best. Uh, And he was just trying to civilise people. Come on. So obviously I didn't read it. And then I go and I look to the comment section. There was no comment section. In an article mm. about freedom. Yeah. Well, yeah. Are we surprised? No, but I just I, thought I'd point it out. I mean, yeah, you know, no, no, I, I you know we're on the same side <laughs> again on this. It's um Yeah. But I mean that's so, the kind of thing that's gonna make me go anyway, into this, the arms this, into the arms this, of David Icke. The gentleman here is Mark, and I can't I my screen has frozen here. So but I think we're still pushing out our discussion um occupy on my contention ag- agree with mark windows and uh, that's that's my source i wasn't involved um I, I followed it quite closely i was already living in sweden when it was all going on um okay and uh what's it called in, in indian indiano who's from cardiff he, he, he uh he did a song called "What You're Gonna Do" and posted it on David's blog, and David blogged it because it, I mean it is very good. Uh, talking about zombie bankers and stuff like that. Okay. So shout out to in Indian Indiano, who's still you know it's got loads of views on YouTube. That if it's still up. Okay, um, I'll look it up. R- R- Russell Brand's film, "The Emperor's New Clothes," which, which uh, basically is suppressed. It's on my BitChute channel. It's well worth watching. And this is coming out of the austerity initiative, talking about 
banking and about no bankers were sent to jail for what happened in 2008. The reframing of that, the, the, the revisionism that's gone on about that austerity regime that was imposed after the financial crisis. Um, ten years after, I was looking the other day, there, there was a film that was produced with all the culprits, Paulson, uh, Geithner um, and Bernanke, all basically, you know, sort of saying, oh, nothing to see here. It wasn't us. You know, it was all those wicked people that borrowed that money that they couldn't afford. I mean, it was classic Vic blaming. blaming. Yeah, exactly. Blaming. She now, shouldn't have. She shouldn't have worn that short skirt. Exactly. So effectively, um, this idea of the memory hole and then the revisionist, you know, this is what we're going to print instead. I mean, it's all very 1984. Um, but what I'm saying is there are precedents to this type of um, disruption of a popular resistance to unpopular establishment measures and unpopular establishment me measures which aren't supported by evidence are face masks lockdowns compulsory vaccinations okay and 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 also the very idea that there had been a pandemic um that it, it, it's um i i just started watching before we started this the latest Max Egan thing on Bitshoot, uh, where Max is talking. Uh, th there's there's basically a cartoon strip appearing, talking about uh, these things. It's very good. I like watching Max Egan stuff. Um, now, uh, my basic point is where you've got two people saying, "Well, let's question this. Let's do some critical thinking. Let's criticize." the information, the data, the, the key actors in the narrative which we are all being insisted upon, coerced to comply with. So your Valances, your Witties, your Bill Gates, your Matt Hancocks, your Boris Johnsons, um, uh, your Professor Neil Ferguson's, uh, all manner of experts that are rolled out to support this central government propaganda narrative okay right so people that come up against that so say well hold on we're not happy with that of course everybody isn't going to agree on all of the points of, of, of a, a question um and this answers your question on on on, on kate here where does she stand on this these broader issues you know wh wh where does she go from expertise into bumper sticker grabbing as it were uh, we all do that um one you know what do they say that the hardest word in the english language is no um uh, uh, perhaps the hardest sentence is i don't know and and there seems to be um uh, a resistance that that we all seem to have these days of saying i don't know you know you have to be a denier you know denial is a is a form of saying you know i know enough to deny it's not that i you know i'm a denial a devout i don't know her you know you say well look I, I don't know you know maybe you do know and good luck to you well convince me you know why are you right and this person over here wrong you know well you know what that's examine... actually that that's that's actually also part of what uh what happened with occupy because occupy like the world trade organization is a consensus-based organization and so if one person doesn't get it then it doesn't go. It doesn't happen. Um, and I, I don't know if that's what the Extinction Rebellion um, uh, sortition utopia is pushing. But I feel like I'm interrupting you again because you wanted to say... No, no, well, th th that's a point, point on consensus that you make there. Um, the, the simple thing... I mean, I had these things open to just to click through. But I, I think essentially, you know, we've discussed the... This general idea, right, that there are legitimate voices with valid arguments against this claimed consensus narrative, okay, which if you're against that narrative, you must have some sort of mental deficiency, which we can conveniently label as conspiracy theorist, okay. And here we have the BBC putting a woman's son 
and interviewing them at length, 18 minute interview, voice interview, uh, a three minute video interview, actually saying, you know, look, even her own son thinks she's mad. That's what they're basically I mean, may, may, maybe they think that there are um, Republicans abroad who need to be, you know, set straight and that they might end up watching that. I don't know. Because if you think about it, I mean, obviously it has some influence here, but the, the big story is the American election. I mean, I find that the BBC avoid telling us things. I mean, I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but, you know, things that really ought to be said. So, for example, you know, the, the school meals, uh, mm -hmm. when the school meal vote happened, then they have what the papers say not long after that at 1030 they didn't mention it at all, even though it was it was slightly mentioned in one of the papers. They didn't mention it. It took about 24 hours for it to really get mentioned because the Internet was melting as a result of the fact that they said, you know, like many people are unemployed. I think they were still talking about the number of the, the, the stats for child poverty are huge and it just wasn't getting mentioned. So going back to your thing about if there's something important and people want to talk about it and they're not able to talk about it, or when they do talk about it, they're getting labelled. What's the process whereby that thing still gets talked about? Because it's very easy with our parliamentary system and court system and all these things for, for issues to get shut down, for voices to be silenced, and that's it. So, I mean, I wonder if you're proposing some sort of an, a Nassim Taleb anti-fragile approach to communication as opposed to finance. Uh, and and that perhaps Web3 and BitChute, uh, therein lies the response. Well, I, I, actually, for that to happen, people have to get outside of the Google browser or, or the mainstream browser thing. So Microsoft Edge, uh, Google Chrome, um, variations thereof, even Mozilla Firefox to a certain extent. Although I, I I find that's a better browser than are they, than are they narrowing are they narrowing people's imagination and their information options? Is that what you're saying? They 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 literally use something called twiddling to 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 um, game the algorithm to, to tell you what to think to tell you what you're allowed to think basically in a way yeah, to control the information which you process and you know to I mean, basically the suggestibility the best way to get anyone to believe anything is to make them think it was their own idea in the first place which is what me searching on google does right well yeah i, I go oh i'm really interested in this and they give me another if they just give me a press release don't they this is what's really bad sometimes yeah. um on the google experiment anyone can do is do a search on chrome and do a, a search on duck go go even in the chrome browser just using the Chrome browser, but the Duck Go Go. It's completely search. different, isn't it? Right. It's completely different. Um, or use Dissenter or use Brave. You, you use use one of the into use Start Page. Use use. I, I mean, I customize the Start Page called Hypatia's Eye Browser, which has got all sorts of links to all sorts of. Um, uh, oh, what's the word? Um, dissent. What what what, what dissent is called? Um, what was it? Called? What were they called in the Soviet Union? People that that uh, not militants, but in the Soviet Union, what, what dissident, was uh, dissidents? Dissidents. Dissidents. Yeah, all yeah. sorts of dissident, dissident stuff. You know, uh, you know that's what you want. You want a bit of dissidence. That's what you want. <laughs> well, yeah, I think uh, it's good to it's good to be able to go outside what they're being given, because if you're not, then it's not. You're not really thinking, are you? Um, I remember once, I think I might have typed out something like COVID-19. We're talking in March or, mm. or coronavirus into Google, uh, particularly Google Google News, or it may even have been Google. And you can adjust Google so that you have 250 on each page. It was uh -huh. about four pages. That was it. That was um, it. Yeah. I, wasn't allowed, I wasn't allowed more. They'd limited it. There was a perimeter and whatever you could see was inside that and there were obviously things outside that and i couldn't get it mm. so how am i supposed to find if someone's putting something up how am i supposed to find it yeah if well, it's not forgiven me yeah i mean i i but just to recap because i think we ought to wrap up i mean um it's one hour, one hour 34 minutes according this um, uh, okay yeah yeah so 
the BBC thing, Sebastian attacking his mother, Kate. Kate and Anna Brees having their separate spate. Um, precedence for uh, opposition groupings, movements, call them what you will, being In infiltration. Infiltrated, infiltrated yeah. So, uh, so terms to take away, gatekeepers, controlled in uh, con con controlled opposition um uh useful idiots um fifth columnists quizlings uh argent provocateur um nudging gert gigarenza um What, what what we would call loosely call mind control and um, for that sort of thing what century of self adam curtis hyper normalization i'm surprised more people aren't talking about that as a film and, and the moment. It, mm. at the moment when everyone's talking about the new normal hyper normalization new normal you know uh, it, you know yet again well, you were talking you, yeah, I mean, we, did, we didn't we didn't explore it but you were talking about the great reset as well so it's very interesting also the way that climate change something which was you know you'd wave the flag for that on the left and now suddenly the large corporates are saying oh the the, the eu green deal the, the you know all of this stuff is now coming at you from uh, yeah. from top yeah. so on that what i would say is that the reaction to a false alarm on a pandemic by by the reaction to that false alarm continuing and deepening it tends to suggest that another agenda has been introduced into the uh into the game as it were um on the basis that well you know shit, better luck next time this is bill gates second pandemic or biological word that he's touting now it's kind of like you know when was the last gosh. one in march you mean the last one was in march he's doing it again today no, 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 but, um joe biden mentioned dark winter in the last presidential debate and the dark winter exercise was an exercise of a small talk so attack on the united states that was war gamed um actually i think it was three months before the 9 11 attacks so it was in late 2000 that the dark winter was an exercise not dissimilar to event 201 but or, don't tell me don't tell me gates had anything to do with that yeah he funded well oh dark winter i don't uh, you know because uh, he was still he was still running microsoft. he uh, was still yeah, running microsoft at the time wasn't he the, the, the common line the, the common the common uh vector on dark winter and event 201 is john hopkins uh, university not bill gates bill right. gates did fund the event 201 uh but the dark winter the the common party um it, it, it is john hopkins university who are involved in both of them i mean other people that would have been involved as well but sure. it's it, it, it's a category of war gaming um not dissimilar to uh in, in in false flag events there we are another conspiracy theory oh my god false flags do they have in gulf gulf of tonkin which we mentioned earlier yes of course they do um in operation gladio yeah uh, professor daniel ganza look him up look at gladio um uh you were talking about um, you, you were talking the, the human laboratory weren't you the um the horizon documentary that yeah, in 1995, which again, it, it, it is on the uh, which is on the theme of of, of um, uh, contraception, isn't it, and vaccines? Yes, uh, but birth control and sterilization by uh, by by foul means, involuntarily, not even coerced, just done. Yeah, uh, basically convenient side effects that the the administers of the supposed contraception are, are fully aware of 
and 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 there are several themes of population control all mixed into that eugenics whatever in that horizon documentary well i'm glad you uh, i'm glad you've raised this because i'd just like to clarify are you one of those people who would like to cut the population of the planet down to half a billion no not at all i'm not i mean, I, I, I i i i'm a cornucopian so uh the famous argument on this was between a uh, an academic whose surname was simon um and and paul ehrlich and they had a bet uh, and, and Simon is a cornucopian. I'm a, I, I believe we can do much more with less uh, in, in line with the philosophy uh, of um, oh, the guy that invented the geodesic domes. Um, Buckminster Fuller. Yes. So Buckminster Fuller says, you know, tense egrity, doing more with less. Um, and that kind of philosophy of abundance mm. doesn't work in a capitalism and a financialized capitalism uh, uh, predicated upon the idea of scarcity and particularly scarcity of the monetary unit, um, which, you know, it's about creating demand for the monetary unit and centralizing control as opposed to realizing uh, the full potential of production and human creativity. So I'm a cornucopian and a lot of people talk about digital technology computer science and stuff like that um i would say uh what never gets talked about you know people talk about ai and stuff or i was talking to my wife about it when i was dropping her off earlier about artificial intelligence um and i, I you know what you don't have is artificial sentience and sentience and creativity is not something yeah you uh, can't do that can you no no what, what i sort of I, I, where i was trying to describe this one i sort of said you know in 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 a in a file download world where you download the file and that's it so we were talking about whether um you could download a file to learn to play the guitar say um yeah. or to play music and and the simple the, the point is that um what you would then become is a record player You'd be replicating stuff that's already there and, mm. and any variation has to be some form of probability stochastic sort of it's like it's know, like the gm food uh, monoculture isn't it ra random number generator type it's like the type. gm food monoculture isn't it roger it's like the monoculture uh i'm not you sure just, how... you just you just repeat it it's the same thing well, you, there's no variety over and over and uh, but the point is you can still have variety but how do you generate the vi variety spontaneous well, if you can't generate it you're not gonna have it are you? spontaneous creativity in art okay is not from a random gener number generator within us it's from our sentience hmm. I, I, I mean i'm not going to get into pelagius and free will and stuff like that but but it, it's a free will thing um and so again determinism and uh free will and uh authoritarianism and um uh libertarianism you know that th they are certainly in my own mind much more real than a left-right explanation of the world it has labels they work up to a point but they're not i mean i don't believe in universals as it were but um when all of these things are kind of going into the pot at the moment because of artificial intelligence so-called artificial intelligence which on my is download culture as opposed to uh artificial sentience that doesn't and can never exist um uh get away from the idea that we're being told that we need to do something one because we all need to protect ourselves from this dreaded lurgy COVID-19 um, but two we can also solve our own wounds inflicted on the planet climate change as well at the same time win-win isn't it wonderful i.e green new deal great reset mm. um, and yet and we can take some psychedelics as well well there are there are, you know 
that's the brave new world soma crew as opposed to the 1984 lot which, which is where you know you, the that's the precariat so you know that they're not mutually exclusive the the one in the middle is probably uh, and the best thing between the two is hg wells is uh, the state of man if you read that um hg wells uh wasn't from the same privileged background as huxley and 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 and, 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 and uh blair or george Ordwell, um eric mm. blair um uh H.G. Wells was a Kent grammar school boy, you know, whatever. And, and uh, if you read his nonfiction output, you get a real good sense of uh, all the arguments that are still going on today, I think, right. including arguments to do with theosophy and the theosophists, uh, which is a rich well from which David Icke draws from. Sure. Um, so, uh, I mean, that, that broadens it out more than the simple point I, I wanted to do by having a chat today around Jan and, and the simple point is that that um, uh, people with genuine questions and criticisms of the consensus narrative which isn't a majority narrative the only consensus exists with a very narrow band of elitists and uh, technocratic government globalist type people mm. who, who believe in a certain modern uh, model of governance and a policy framework supporting their model of governance okay uh -huh. which isn't something that ever gets done through the ballot box or which people 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 aren't going to vote for the jackpot stamping on their face forever to uh, paraphrase orwell you know but you know people aren't down for that not not unless there's some sort of sadomasochist you know so there are some sadomasochists of course so maybe they would but you know um i the, 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 you know I, I, it's, 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 so that's that's kind of where we're at really so um the simple point is that who is or what is the danger here what what is the object of criticism it's not each other whilst you might not agree with each other's arguments and and may have different policy prescriptions right your united um uh or your your, your shared interests are actually in uh challenging uh these these things being slipped in by the back door while you're arguing so mm. you know kate anna um and and people that are, are cleaving to either of those two tribes if you will um they're much better off talking to each other now there was a very interesting thing i saw the other day there was a protest i think it was in berlin where Roger, just, were... just 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 one second sorry just one second Sorry about that. Yeah. So there were two groups of protesters, one in favour of lockdown, the other not, or maybe it was mass, whatever it was. And they actually started to talk to each other just to sort of say, well, hold on a second. What, what are you saying? What are we saying? Right. And the police broke up the discussion that was going on. There are lots of pictures on the uh, Internet of orthodox jews and palestinians in israel um uh actually hugging each other you know there's a in there's lots of interfaith stuff with islam as well uh where people are working on that and i mean uh, someone who's really involved in the interfaith thing with israel is nico nick uh is it nico Pilled, the, the 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 general son he wrote a famous book about that um and you you know, you see, see victims of these conflicts that go into hot war, okay, um, they have a lot in common, uh, but their common enemy isn't each other. It, 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 it's, uh, you know, it's a puppet master idea. Now, of course, when you start then using those sorts of um, 
uh, Images. Analogies, yeah, yeah. Uh, analogies, images, whatever. Yeah, you um, get into trouble. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. You, you know, it's a minefield. You get because, accused. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'd be accused of sort of saying, "Oh, are you alluding to, you know, yeah, the sure, Jewish conspiracy, the this conspiracy, the that conspiracy." Um, well, actually, I'm involved in a great big conspiracy, and it's the conspiracy of the human right race that. that um, uh, to to actually get along together and, and live a happier and more contented life, you know, uh, and so you know, uh, you know, let's cook that one up, you know, let's start conspiring for that, shall we? Uh, and and let's see where that goes. Uh, you know, when, when does that stop being a conspiracy and actually turns into uh, a reality, a conspiracy reality? You know, let, let's aim for that. Let's not argue with each other or whatever. Um, you know, it seems to me that there's a, you know, th th there is a common um, interest in actually opposing this this draconian authoritarian um, fairy tale uh, that that we all have to be living in a fear of each other. Uh, that we're all a bag of germs. We're all going to infect each other. You know, we don't care about each other, uh, and we don't give a shit about the planet. And you know, we're all these bad terrible people and all the rest of it hell i mean you know yeah i've met some bastards in my life but not that many of them and and and, and uh you know i it serves very narrow interests that are that are actually driving through a very unpopular agenda right um and it suits their purposes for people like Kate and Anna and, you know, uh, you know, other people that are maybe uh, battling for their little corner of the social media uh, mm. pile, as it were. Um, well, I, it, it is counterproductive and it's naive to think that there aren't people actually egging that on like 77 uh brigade but also um you know the, yeah all sorts yeah but yeah i mean it, it, it patently of course you're going to do that you know it's not you know of course they're going to do it um it of course they would do that but come on let's not be so daft as to fall, fall for it people and let, let's just be a little bit more discerning and, and, and let's no, not go around accusing everybody like Mark here of being a, a police officer or, or, or um, George of being an MI5 officer or, 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 or what not and the other. You know, maybe they are. I, I, maybe I, I've made no accusations today. I just like to say. <laughs> the point is, it's possible that they could be. You know, um, why would a government want to bring in a bill legalizing illegal stuff for people pursuing government business? You know, I, what, yeah, well, it's, let's it's, not go there now. We'll, we'll, yeah, I'd like <laughs> to talk about that another time. But um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Right. All right. Well, look, I'll give you a call on, on, on Skype when I reboot my machine and, and let's see if that has managed to stream. OK, brilliant. Uh, it has because my, I think my, it has. Yeah. The rest of my machine has. Uh, has jammed up so th thank if anybody's watched this or if anybody does yeah, have thanks for watching um, yeah thanks for watching cheers Ranjan. Yeah, bye 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 half past three Rasmus yeah, well we're picking Rihanna on up at four mate so well let me just get this